Hey, g'day, and welcome back to Steve's Tesla. Regular subscribers will remember this video from way back in 2023, where I compared a number of publicly available EV chargers. In the last six months, additional brands of EV chargers have become available in my region. And also, Tesla have opened up their superchargers to allow non-Teslas to charge. Also, the top contender in my last review was the NRMA. This was primarily because they were free to use at the time. Now, this is no longer the case. So, in this updated comparison, I'm comparing the Tesla supercharger charging a Tesla with the same supercharger charging a non-Tesla. I'll also have a look at EP Pulse, EV, a slow wall charger, and the new charger and app from NRMA. I'll have a, another look at ChargeFox, and there are some 30,000 medium speed EV chargers progressively being rolled out across New South Wales where I live. So I'll take this opportunity to trial those and add them into the comparison. Also, let's have a look at Ampol because they weren't available in my region when I last did this comparison. So let's get started. So to try and be as fair as possible, I've preloaded the apps and set up my account details. I've also set up a spreadsheet to compare the results from each of the charges for availability, cost, speed, reliability, and the number of steps it takes to use the app. I think we all know the results are going to end up with some EV charges being free but slow, and others being fast but more expensive, with several in between. For a Tesla owner, of course, the Tesla supercharger is the benchmark because there's no app required and you just simply plug your car in. So if you navigate to the Tesla supercharger, the battery is preconditioned for maximum charging speed on arrival. For a non-Tesla owner, there are a few more steps involved than with a Tesla, but you can start by scanning the QR code on arrival or preferably set up the Tesla app on your phone in advance, enter your credit card details and set up an account. Then really all you need to do is select the location where you're charging, select the particular charging bay that you're using and press start charging. Now your car will possibly require that you go into the car's own app and also tell it to start charging. You may need to enter a security code to achieve that. So I'm just about to pull into the BP service station in Ferry Meadow and try out the new BP Pulse EV charger. I've used BP Pulse before but not at this location so let's just see how this works out. These are heavy duty charging cables. So it's a CCS charger. Stick it in. So we power up the BP Pulse app. Logging in. Select the charger. Connect to one. Begin charging. So we're successfully starting to charge. It's ramping up. Peaking at about 65 kilowatts. They've really fitted some heavy duty 
cables to these CCS chargers. A lot heavier duty than I've seen at other stations and a lot longer too. So they're obviously designed to accommodate a variety of different vehicles. So I'm going to stop charging. Put these charge cables back. I've got to say they're very sturdy but pretty heavy. Hard to do with one hand on the camera. And recently the Wollongong Mall has installed EV chargers branded EV and I've got the app set up to give these a go. So let's just hop into the mall car park and see if we can find one that's free and hook ourselves up for a few minutes just to see what the charging experience is like. Now you've got to pay for parking so that's going to cost you $3.50. Now I've noticed that there is one of the charger stalls free at the moment so I'll just drive around here and pop into it. So this is the EV brand charger. Let's just hook this one up. I've got the app pre-set up, so it should all just load and go. Definitely a lighter cable than at the BP Pulse we've just been to. Let's just plug this in. This is a CCS adapter. It's now asking me to use the app to scan the QR code, or if I have an EV card, to tap it against the RF reader. And although I got a message from EV saying that charging had started, it hadn't actually started charging my car. So I opened the Tesla app and pressed the start charging button. And this solved the problem. The EV charger started charging the car immediately and it peaked at 49.2 kilowatts. So you can either use the QR code on the app or if you apply in advance, you can get one of these EV cards with an RF chip in it and use that when you're logging into the charging unit. You can stop charging either directly from the Tesla app or just press this button here and charging will stop. For the fourth test, I decided to use a mall destination charger. These are slower chargers being AC only. However, they are effectively free because you can charge while you're shopping. But you can use the destination charger for pretty well as long as you're at the mall. I have found on previous occasions, because they are free and convenient, the stalls can be fully occupied when you arrive. So for that reason they got a lower availability score. But when the chargers are available and working, they are very convenient, although they're not particularly fast, at about 11 kilowatts. However, they are free, and free is good if you've got the time. For the fifth test, I went to the new NRMA chargers in Wollongong. In the previous survey, the NRMA were rated highly because they didn't charge a fee. However, now they do. New NRMA app is very similar to the others where you first select the location, then your charger station, then you select your connector and then press start charging. And once charging started, the EV charger very quickly ramped up to the full 70 kilowatts. The cost to charge was displayed within the app as well as a running total. In the car I was getting about 67 kilowatts and everything ran very smoothly. I only stayed a few minutes as this was just a test and I then got a text message to tell me how much my charging session had cost. For test number six I headed back out to Shell Cove where I'd been before. I wanted to try the ChargeFox charger which is co-branded NRMA. It's potentially one of the fastest chargers in my region rated at up to 350 kilowatts. 
On arrival, I found that both of the charging bays were occupied, so I just waited for a few minutes until one of the other EV owners moved on. Now, the arrangement with NRMA took a little bit to figure out. These are ChargeFox chargers. They're not listed on the NRMA app, and you need to use the ChargeFox app to charge your vehicle. First, select your location, then select the charger port you are using. Connect the cable to your car and then press start. Once the charging had started, the Tesla app enabled me to see the charge rate which peaked at 86 kilowatts. This charger is rated at up to 350 kilowatts. I'm not sure what conditions are required to achieve that. The co-branding with NRMA might be a little confusing as you can't use the NRMA app. However, what it transpires is that NRMA members get a 10% discount using these particularly branded ChargeFox chargers. To achieve this, you set up your NRMA membership details in the ChargeFox app. For test number 7, we went to the newly installed EVX roadside chargers. You need to bring your own Type 2 cable, so I've counted that as step 1 in the ease of use. Now, some 30,000 of these are being rolled out across New South Wales and Australia. Plug the connectors in at both ends. To commence charging, simply open the app, and then use the app to scan the QR code on the side of the charger. Then press Start Charging. The EVX charging process via the app is one of the easiest and I do wonder why some of the other manufacturers don't do something similar. For our final test I drove to Ampol in Wollongong as Ampol had not been available when I last conducted this survey. I expected a fairly normal application experience but I was in for a bit of a shock. The Ampol app behaves like many of the others requiring you to identify the location, identify the connector, and then select the payment method. It was at that point I was presented with a payment reservation requirement and got charged $30 in advance. That $30 advance payment requirement really did change my perception of the Ampol charging experience. Okay, so let's have a look at the results. If your criteria is speed and ease of use, then I would put in first place a Tesla supercharger for a Tesla owner. For a non-Tesla owner, the cost and complexity of multiple apps probably eliminates Tesla as the preferred choice. Second and third place goes to ChargeFox NRMA and the standalone NRMA chargers. If your criteria is low cost and ease of use, then definitely have a look at BP Pulse, followed by NRMA and EVX. If you're searching for the middle ground, then the overall best compromise of speed versus cost would go to Tesla for a Tesla owner, but not necessarily for a non-Tesla owner. Second place, certainly the NRMA is the best for all makes and models, with third place really being BP Pulse, a good moderate price and great speed. Hey, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. G'day and welcome to Steve's Tesla. This is my channel dedicated to electric vehicles and renewable energy. Subscribe now and let's drive.